coil and a, a wrist coil, a foot coil, and a shoulder coil. How do they work? They're just, they're just copper, they're just plastic with copper wires. So they're just antennas, just like the video. Okay, sure. You have James? Yeah, I'm James. I'm with the text here. This is an image of cardiac here. It's fairly new to MRI, but not terribly new. And you can see there's a little motion going on. They're actually working on the technology to make it to where the motion works for us. Um, we always have a hold their breath on exhale, which is kind of hard for the heart patients. But if we get a good patient, this is a great example of the imaging. So you can do this with the 3T now? Yes. Okay. Yes. And we do a lot of these mainly right now at the 1.5 across the street as we're learning the softwares and the new nuances of the machine. So the 1T or the 1.5 will do this also? Yes. And I am not sure if this one was done on the 3T or the 1.5 here. So what is it that you're going to be able to do with the 3T that you weren't able to We see do? Uh, much more detail. We're double uh, the signal, you know, so we're running at uh, three Tesla versus one five. So although the more strengths there and we have to turn certain patients away that have stents and stuff that are not, you know, known up to the three T, we actually get great nerve detail, great uh, musculoskeletal stuff. We're using the tagline, better images equal better decisions. Well, yeah, I mean, if we get the better images, the better they can treat the symptoms and stuff, so. Um, but, but your job is get, taking great pictures of the physicians and diagnosticians, sure. the radiologists sure. actually have to interpret what they see. Yeah, and one of the luxuries as well is if we want to get the same images as 1.5, we can do it a lot faster for those patients that are claustrophobic and or, uh, you know, very uncomfortable and can't quite handle the pain that they're in, which is pretty common. So we can uh, cut down scans and get the same images we could at other facilities in half the time. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So you lay on the table like if we were doing your spine, you'd be laying on the spine coil. Uh -huh. um, and so you lay on the spine coil on the table, the table would raise up and hook to that thing that's got the holes in it, and then that would pull you into the scanner. And then whatever we're scanning is on top of the scanner. See you, Pat. Thanks for stopping by. So, oh, that's pretty cool. And then these items over here are called surface. We have, we have these are anatomy specific. Oh. So if we're scanning your knee, your knee would be in here. Oh. You snap it shut, you snap your knee in there, slide you in. Oh. You're doing your breast, you'd be prone on there with your breast hanging down. Mm -hmm. you know, this, these devices here, there's, there's other body parts down there. So this is the scanner, and this this is is just being held in place by the magnetic field. So you can pull. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, see, it's not being. It's not, like, atta what? it's not attached. to anything. I thought that was an invisible dog. Yeah, it's the invisible <laughs> dog. You want to crawl in there and get the ball? Sure. You to have you have you no. seen the, no. all right, the, the ball you. trick? Yeah. Do the ball trick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this was a bad plan to, to set this up this way, but there's no way to keep people out of here. So. Oh. And actually, it was the only way that we could guarantee that this would get sucked into the magnet. So. Oh. 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 Jump up. I, I've seen this demonstration. I'll let you need the dialogue bar if you want. No way. All right. Basically, you shield the magnet, so right here it's fine. But. You know, but unfortunately, if you get a little closer to the magnet right at that area, oh. it gets a little bit quicker. So what's in the tennis balls? Uh, there's a, uh, I think they're uh, some nuts. So they put some steel, steel in there. Uh, there's two, maybe washers, two washers, one in here. So right about here is the threat, so you can feel pull a little bit. It's not the too bad, but once you get to right about here, it's really strong, about 10 pounds worth. And the, the machine's on, but it's not, is it always like that? Which powers to it? 24 7, 365. The only way to stop it is by quenching it. And uh, trust me, you don't want to necessarily do that. Uh, that's for emergency. So you always have to be alert around. Yeah, so we always screen people 
able to come past the point where you're standing. And normally we have the metal detector on that's right above your head, but right now, for, you know, has anything going off because of the camera and stuff. That'll help us, you know, keep these sort of uh, situation, situations from happening. And you know, it's about 60 miles an hour that bolt travels. And it doesn't stop until it gets to a neutral spot. So. Okay, so you scared me pretty badly. Now, why, why would patients not be worried? How do well, we... you, uh, you always want to have a respect. You know, you want to respect it, um, but you wouldn't be worried because, you know, you're screened thoroughly and we're very, uh, you know, we have books and uh, uh, very uh, many resources at our services, you know, to make sure that we don't put something in there that shouldn't be in there. You know, so we're very, we're very on top of it, rather safe than sorry, so we'll turn patients away if there's any doubt. Well, there, and there's lots of procedures and the, the patient and the doctor have to certify that they don't have metal parts or... Right, and the patients like many times have cards and stuff that describe the parts, so like titanium is a non-ferrous metal, so you know, and certain stints, like you know, coronary stints usually pass, you know, 